Are you sick of the city? Want to find a rural town? Get a mortgage on some real estate? Who doesn't, right? Today we're looking at great rural towns in Nevada. I'll tell you up front, this is a rough one. First of all, 85% of Nevada is owned or managed by the United States government. So they really don't have a lot of people and a lot of towns to choose from. And most of the towns they do have kind of suck. Nevada doesn't have many rural towns by most people's definition. The words rural town usually conjures up images of farms, hay, and tractors slowly making their way down a road lined with trees. Nevada doesn't have any of those. Most of the pictures of Nevada are often mistaken for NASA pictures sent from Mars. Other than the Reno area and maybe a few other places, it's exactly what you think a desert state should look like. Not really traditional rural, I guess you could say. The other reason Nevada is a rough state for this series is they're considered to be the worst state when it comes to healthcare. Not because they don't have great facilities or healthcare professionals, it's because of access. If you live in a Nevada small town, chances are you got about an hour drive to find a hospital. But we're gonna push through with all 50 states and Nevada's next up. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number six, Jackpot, Nevada. Jackpot is an unincorporated community and census designated place in Elko County, Nevada on the border with Idaho, about 45 minutes south of Idaho Falls. 90% of the homes here are mobile homes. It has a golf course and a few casino resort type places. These casinos are pretty large for a town this size, but they really cater to people coming across the border from Idaho, not as much the locals. Most of the residents in Jackpot actually work for one of these places. Like I said, they have a golf course, they have a dog park, and the Salmon Falls Reservoir is just outside of town if you need any entertainment outside the casino. Jackpot has a population of around 855 people or 1,100 people. Wikipedia says it's 850, but the 2020 census says it's almost 1,100 people. I don't know. It's somewhere in that neighborhood. Maybe they've grown a little bit since 2020. Who knows? One other website I look at says they have a population of about 920. Seems to be some confusion here. I actually called Jackpot to see how many residents they had and I talked to a few different people nobody really knew there either. Uh, one person I talked to said, well, I'm not sure who you looking for. And I'm all, I'm not looking for anyone. I just want to know the population there is. And the guy said, well, if you're coming here to get someone, make sure you check in with the sheriff first. <laughs> I was like, apparently the guy thinks I'm a bounty hunter or something like that. Jackpot probably doesn't see many bounty hunters because they have a crime rate that gets a thumbs up. It's 33% lower than the national average. Their internet, everyone on this list just about is going to get a thumbs up because everyone here also gets good ratings for Starlink. So you should be able to get Starlink and that should be able to get you right around a gig without a problem. If you don't want to get Starlink, your only real option is a company called True Leap and they only offer 25 Mbps, which is DSL, but they offered 99% of the town. Now, when it comes to their real estate, we're going to give them a faded thumbs up because they don't have any actual homes for sale. They have some lots on the north side of town by the golf course and the park and the dog park and all that and the Idaho border, actually, it's right there. And there's a few homes there, like six or seven, and they've got a bunch of lots for sale ranging from 30,000 to 55,000. You gotta have the home built yourself or contact the developer for the area. In the middle of town around Cactus Pete's Resort and Casino, you got a bunch of mobile home parks. They've got a bunch of open lots, uh, nothing really for sale right now. And on the south side of town, they've got a couple places that are just lots again. Uh, that doesn't look like the best part of town and it's going for about $20,000 to get a lot there. The good news is you can actually live on a street called Hold'em Street, Blackjack Street, Pass Line Street, High Low Lane, Kino Drive, not even kidding, Ace Drive, Hoker Street, Lucky Lady Loop. That's one of my favorites. When it comes to healthcare, they're getting a faded thumbs up. They've got a community health center in town. It's really small. It's one single building. Anything you need medically that they can't cover, which I'm sure is a lot, you're going to be driving up to Twin Falls for 45 minutes away. Number five, Lovelock, Nevada. Lovelock, Nevada, that sounds like a fun place to be. Actually, that sounds like a situation with a married couple that are too cheap to get a divorce. Lovelock is about 90 minutes northeast of Reno. This was the midway stop on the Humboldt Trail for settlers on their way to California, and later it became a train depot and eventually a mining and farming town. The only reason they have farming in this area is because the Humboldt River flows right through this valley. These days, the town depends more and more on tourism. Lovelock got its name from an old 
property owner in the area, George Lovelock. He provided 85 acres for the site that became the town of Lovelock. They named the train station after him when the train station was built. They have a population of just under 2,000 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It is 42% lower than the national average, which is pretty good. A lot of places in Nevada kind of have some serious crime issues. I wouldn't say serious. They do have some areas that are really bad, like North Las Vegas, things like that. But most small towns have some crime. It's always a little above the average. When it comes to internet, they get a thumbs up there too. They have AT&T DSL and it covers 99% of the town. That gets you up to 100 Mbps, which is pretty good for a town in Nevada. Like I've said before, Starlink is also very strong here. So that's why they get the thumbs up. If you're looking for real estate in Lovelock, they get a thumbs up there too. They have a lot of places for sale and they have price ranges for everyone's budget. Starting off at lots for $17,000. Homes start around $150,000. They're probably going to need some work. And then they have some nicer homes that are in the $400,000, $500,000 range. Lovelock gets a thumbs up for their health care because they got a nice place in town called Pershing General Hospital. Anything beyond what they can do, you're probably going to be heading into Reno 90 minutes away. Number four, Battle Mountain, Nevada. That's a really cool name. We got a place out here in, or well, it's actually in Washington, but not too far away from Portland called Battleground, Washington. I love that name. Battle Mountain's pretty cool too, though. Battle Mountain has a golf course and giant letters on a hillside just outside of town that say BM, in case you don't know where you are, or you need some encouragement because you're constipated. According to local legend, the name stems from a confrontation between Native Americans and early settlers in the 1850s. This town is sticking to the 1950s architecture. Look at these places. I'm not bagging on them. I think it's amazing. Look how nice they still look. These signs, you know, they weren't made a couple years ago. Normally when you see things like this, the signs and stuff, it's usually so faded and so trashed over time that the only reason it's up there because they can't afford or they don't want to pay for new signs. But these guys have actually redone their signs and they're sticking with it and it looks great. Bravo. Battle Mountain sits about three hours northeast of Reno, so if you want to go to a big city, you got a little bit of a trip ahead of you. Their population sits at about 3,000, and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It is actually 48% lower than the national average. When it comes to their real estate, they get a thumbs up there too, because they have a lot to offer, and they got something for every budget. You have plots of land outside of town for twenty, thirty, and $50,000. You have older homes that are going to need some serious work, and they start off around around 190,000. They've got a few of those. And then they have newer homes that are going for about 450 to $550,000. So like I said, something for every budget. Battle Mountain also gets a thumbs up for their healthcare. They have Battle Mountain General Hospital in town. It's a good sized place. It's got an emergency room, pretty much everything you need, anything beyond what they can do. Yeah, you got that drive into Reno or maybe even Vegas, which is even further away. But their hospital looks pretty legit, so you should be able to be covered there. When it comes to internet, again, thumbs up. They've got AT&T, which offers DSL at 100 Mbps. They cover 90% of the town. And then of course you have Starlink, which should do pretty good here too. Number three, Caliente, Nevada. Caliente was first settled by freed slaves. Not long after that, others showed up in this secret little valley and ranching began. It stayed a secret for a few more years and then the train showed up and so did more people. In 1905, the Union Pacific Railroad was completed, followed by the construction of a train depot in the style of a Spanish mission. The train depot was built in 1923. It's still there, now home to some of the city and county offices and a museum. Caliente is also a great spot for mountain biking. They have some really nice trails and a skills park that looks kind of fun. Caliente has a population of about 1,100 people, so it's a good size for being out here by itself. Caliente sits about two and a half half hours north of Las Vegas, and it's about two hours from St. George. When it comes to healthcare, they get a big thumbs up. They've got a pretty good sized hospital in town with an emergency room and everything. It's called the Grover C. Dills Medical Center. Anything beyond what they got going on, you're probably going to have to go to St. George. If you're looking to buy a home here, good news, they get a thumbs up. They've got, again, something for every budget from small properties for as low as 20000 to homes that are about 165000 that you might need to do a little work on all the way up to really nice homes for about 600,000. They got quite a few to choose from, especially open lots of land. If you got a spare 16 million laying around, you can buy 629.3 acres of Nevada desert. 
Caliente gets a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's actually 56% lower than the national average, which is outstanding. If you need some internet in Caliente, you got really one choice, which is Starlink. And like I've said before, it's pretty good here in Nevada. The only other ones you have are the lame satellites of Viastat and HughesNet. They offer 25 and 50 Mbps satellite to 100% of the town, but those aren't the best. I've had to use HughesNet for a weekend and it made me want to cry. Number two, Panaca, Nevada. Panaca is a small farming community about 15 minutes north of our last town, Caliente. The area that would become Panaca was explored by Mormons in 1857. Brigham Young dispatched some scouts to locate a base and settlement in case the U.S. military came after them. In more recent history, in 2016 actually, an out-of-work nurse drove from Kingman, Arizona in a car filled with explosives and blew up an old co-worker's house. Yeah, he was the only one that died too. There was an injury, a young man was nearby and he just, you know, I think he got some stitches, a piece of metal hit him, nothing major. But this guy blew up a house, blew out windows all around the neighborhood, and nobody died but the guy sitting in the car that blew it up. They still aren't sure why he did this. Weird. One other side note to that, the co-worker wasn't home. He was working a shift down at the hospital in Caliente. But the guy busts into the house, tells the wife to get all the kids out of the house. He's blown up their house. So she didn't argue with him. She gathered the kids and ran down the block and called 911. While she was on the phone with 911, you could hear her house blow up. Other than bombings and Mormons being paranoid of uh, the government, this is a nice place to live. It's affordable and out of the way. So if you're looking for a nice desert rural town, this could be a good place for you. Panac has about 1,100 residents and they get a thumbs up for their crime rate. It's 66% lower than the national average. No clue on how much the bombing in 2016 affected their crime rate, but right now it's 66% lower than the national average. Not bad. They get a faded thumbs up when it comes to their health care. They don't have anything in town other than the fire department. That's not really health care. That's emergency stuff. You're going to have to go down to Caliente if you need anything done. Like I said, less than 20 minutes away. Anything major, you're going to head to Vegas or or St. George, about two and a half hours or two hours away. When it comes to real estate, uh, we're going to give them a faded thumbs up because they don't have a lot to choose from. And when they do and it's a house, it's a little expensive in my opinion. They have a couple places right now for $300,000 and the other one for $325,000. Uh, these aren't the greatest houses, but this is the middle of the desert. I think they should be cheaper. That's just an opinion. But they do have a bunch of lots. These are just vacant lots with scrub brush in them. And those start off around $40,000 and work their way up. When it comes to internet, they're going to get a faded thumbs up too, because they don't have anything other than Starlink. That's your two choices. You do have HughesNet or whatever. Those are available everywhere in the country. Your only real option is Starlink. And like I said earlier, Nevada has a pretty good record of their connection there and how good their internet is with Starlink. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. We would love it if you went over there and subscribed. Maybe watch some videos, give some things a big thumbs up, just like today's video. All right, on to number one. And number one. Urington, Nevada. Urington sits about an hour east of Carson City, Nevada. This place has a lot of history that dates back earlier than the early 1800s. But my favorite piece of history for this place happened during World War II. During World War II, one of the 9,000 Fugo balloon bombs launched at the United States landed on Wilson Ranch near Urington. The ranchers at the place, not knowing what to do with it, but knew it looked like a weapon of some sort, mailed a letter to the government. Yes, like through the mail. They sent a letter to the government telling they had found this thing, but by the time they got a response, they got tired of looking at it. So they had dismantled it and started using the balloon as a hay tarp. Japan sent up like 9,000 of these things and only 300 of them were ever seen or found. A couple in the Yukon territory of Canada and I think one in Mexico. And of the whole thing, 9,000 of these balloons, only six people died from them. And it was in one incident. Total fiasco. These days, Urington has about 3,000 residents and they get a big thumbs up for their crime rate, it's 93% lower than the national average. Not bad, Urington. When it comes to real estate, they also get a thumbs up. Like a lot of places on this list, they have a lot to choose from, like something for every budget. They have a lot of lots for sale that start off around 30,000, and the homes they have start off around 200,000 and work their way up. And the ones they have for 200,000, they don't look terribly bad. They have some really nice ones that come with like an acre of land outside of town, and those go for over 500,000. So definitely 
actually not that bad. Urington might be a little big for this list, but they have a lot of rural area surrounding the town. And that's kind of how they got on this list. They have a good size hospital called South Lion Medical Center. They got an emergency room, all that good stuff. They got dentists in town, got a McDonald's, they got a swimming pool, but it is definitely away from any other metro areas. When it comes to internet, we're gonna give them a thumbs up. They got Starlink, but they also have Frontier. And Frontier, again, doesn't show the speeds they have. They offer DSL there, and they offer it to about 65% of the town. They also have a couple other ones, like Sky Fiber, that offers 100 Mbps to 100% of the town. That's fixed wireless, so that's, I don't know, that's not the best. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.